Hello Internet, Rob here from A Minor Air slash Guitar Craft here to give you a new review on a Jason Richardson Signature Series Sterling by Music Band Cutlass 7. Chapters are down below so you can skip around in the video and see exactly what you're looking for. We're going to go the demo, cover the features, talk about the good, the bad, and my kind of conclusions on this guitar. Okay, so that was my demo, little original track that I wrote for the test of this guitar. For the signal path on the demo, I was using my favorite set of balanced string joy strings running through a string source cable directly into my Motu M2 interface. And for the rhythm guitar tones, you were hearing the Neural DSP Omega Granifier plugin, which I love for rhythm tones. And for the leads and that kind of like gritty ambient tone in the middle, that's all archetype Pliny, again by Neural DSP. The specs on this guitar are as follows. Features a alder body with a poplar burl top, 24 nickel frets that are medium jumbo in their profile, a really nice roasted maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard. It has two humbucker pickups that are by Sterling by Music Man, as well as a three-way switch and two push-push pots on both the volume and the tone control. On the volume knob push-push, you get a 12 dB boost, and on the tone knob, you get the ability to coil tap, which I think is super cool. A three-way switch is great, but it does limit a little bit of your tonal options, and you know, by having that ability to split the coils, you can get at some of those other kind of like strat-like tones. This guitar also comes with a pretty decent gig bag. I wasn't really expecting that. It has a pretty nice amount of padding. The inside is fairly plush. As far as its build quality, it is a little bit on the cheaper end, but the padding is pretty comparable to what you would actually get in like a Strandberg gig bag. So I was pretty happy to see that it comes with some sort of a case. A lot of these more budget to intermediate level guitars, you don't get a case at all. So uh, it's definitely a case that would be good enough to get you to and from, guitar lessons or from a jam session with your band. I don't know if you'd want to use it necessarily to gig per se. You might want to get a little bit of a heavier duty case, but it is definitely very good for just your, your regular light duty kind of traveling. One last feature on this guitar that sets it apart from perhaps, let's say like a John Petrucci model, Sterling by Music Band guitar, is the lower horn has been contoured or made a little smaller so that you can have a little better access to those upper frets when you're standing. I'm going to talk about the lower horn because I actually don't like it later when we get to the bad section. But that is one other thing worth noting. 
The bridge on this guitar is a Sterling by Music Man unit. It is fully floating, so you can push down and pull up, and it has locking tuners to keep it in tune. It does not have a locking nut. So with this system, since it's not a true double locking system, if you really abuse it, it is gonna go out of tune, and we're gonna talk a lot about the bridge later in my bad section, so just hold on to hear more about that. All right, time for the good. The biggest thing that stands out to me is how the back surface of the neck feels, both with the way that it's been finished and also the contour. I found the neck to be very comfortable, very fast because of that finish, and the profile really is geared towards a shredder guitar player. Obviously, Jason Richardson is super shredder guy, so you know it's set up for that kind of a player in mind, and I do think it really delivers there. Another thing that I think is a positive is just the cost cosmetic appearance of the instrument. I really like the poplar burl top. I really like the sunburst color that they went with paired with that roasted maple neck and the rosewood fingerboard. I think it's a striking instrument. It's sleek, it's modern, it's pretty badass. I, I dig it personally. I really appreciate the way that they set up the controls on the guitar. I like that the volume and tone knobs are moved clear out of the way. You know, I'm the kind of player where that like strat sort of controls where the volume knobs real close to the bridge pickup causes a little bit of problems. So I love that it's been moved away. I like the simplicity of the three-way switch, but also love that they included the ability to coil tap. I love to use those kind of coil tap neck or bridge kind of strat-like tones. I do that all the time in my original music, and I love that they included that. The Sterling by Music Man John Petrucci seven string guitar I recently reviewed, I'll put the little link or whatnot, did not have that feature. So on that guitar, you were just a three-way switch. It did still have that push, push 12 dB volume boost on the volume knob, which is cool. It's a feature that I personally don't think I would ever really use all that much. When I'd be gigging, you know, if I'm jumping on my lead tone, it's already kind of dialed in to have that extra bit of gain compared to my stock either crunch or rhythm tone, but it is pretty cool that they include that. Now, while the pickups are technically active pickups, they do require a battery. I found that I really did like them for lead guitar playing especially. For the rhythm stuff, I felt like they were a little mediocre, but on the leads, I really felt like they shined, captured some of the different nuances in my playing, whether it be the vibrato or the bends or a little nuanced slide or whatnot. So now that we're about halfway through this video, if you're digging it, you know, please hit like and subscribe. Helps my channel continue to grow. Here, a minor error is the creative home for everything that I do musically, which is original progressive instrumental music. It's also product reviews and talking head videos like this one and free music lessons. Those are the categories that I cover. Also, if you've got some time, I'd love it if you checked out my new single that I put out this last November called World Minus One. I'll do the little link and yada yada. It's an aggressive progressive metal track kind of in the vein of Jason Richardson's sort of original music. So if you got a minute, I'd love if you went and checked it out. All right, so now the bad things about this guitar. I think the biggest area where this instrument gets let down is that bridge unit. I'm gonna be a little harsh about this bridge. I really didn't like it at all. I had tuning stability issues the whole time that I was tracking uh, and while I was using the guitar and teaching some lessons and things, just found that that unit wasn't as stable as I would have liked and I wasn't even really abusing it. You know, little subtle whammy bar moves or even a bend would knock the thing out of tune. So a little frustrated with the performance of the bridge. It would not flutter at all as well. Now I like that it included a little set screw so that you can tighten the bar. That's a fantastic feature, my Stramberg has that I love that but even with it nice and tight it would not flutter so the combinations of not fluttering tuning issues and I really feel like it was sapping a little bit of the tone out of the instrument I'm just not a fan of the bridge now I understand this is a more budget instrument it's 900 bucks but in the past I've played different Ibanez premium models I owned an Ibanez premium for a while that I felt like would stay in tune vastly better and was just overall had better sort of fit and finish when it came to the bridge now the premium bridge on that Ibanez was also a bit of a tone sucker that's gonna happen on a budget sort of intermediate guitar you know you're not getting the full grown-up version of the bridge which I get 
but again, I just feel like the tuning stability was definitely a problem, even with those locking tuners. Probably would have had to take it to a luthier and really get them to look at that nut and maybe kind of address that. You know, maybe even upgrade the nut to help it be a little bit more stable. Another negative that I found very frustrating is that contoured, or it's basically been made smaller, lower horn. Now when you're standing, because that lower horn is made smaller, it is easier to get into your upper frets, but when you're sitting, the guitar basically acts like a guillotine on your leg. When I was recording and practicing and teaching on it, my leg kept falling asleep because of how small that lower horn was. It's almost like they took a super strat body design and then paired it with like a Les Paul, which is exactly what a Les Paul feels like with that lower sort of smaller horn, except this one has been made sort of sharp. So while I understand the design for standing, I really don't like it for sitting. And in my, again, recent test of the Sterling by Music Man Petrucci model, it did not have the smaller horn, and I found the guitar to be very comfortable sitting, and to be honest, standing as well. So in my own personal opinion, I just didn't like that lower horn, and think that you should be aware that that is a change over the like Petrucci body style, even though they look very similar. I would say for fit and finish on this guitar, it is pretty good overall. The cosmetically, the body and neck are basically perfect. The point where the neck bolts onto the body was really snug, there was no gap in there at all. And overall, I found that the tone was pretty good on the guitar. There was one small thing where the top tuner on the headstock had been kind of incorrectly installed and it was just a little bit closer to the others. But, you know, honestly, overall, I think the fit and finish was pretty good. The front work overall is pretty good. I managed to get the action set up at a pretty low height that I like, and there wasn't too much buzz. I also found that the fret edges were filed pretty well. There really weren't any sharp edges, and right now it's February here in Philadelphia, and it's been very cold, so if you're gonna get those lips popping out, this is definitely the time of year where it's gonna happen. So my thoughts on the guitar, should you buy it? Honestly, I'm not too sure because of that bridge and the tuning stability issues. Now, if you can find one on the used market marked down a couple hundred bucks, it might even make sense to drop in an upgraded bridge. I recently saw a picture from somebody who had upgraded their Petrucci model to the more pro Goto model, and I wasn't sure if they were able to just drop it right in or not. It looked like there wasn't really any modifications that needed to be done on that Petrucci model, so that might be something worthwhile to look into. You know, get a better bridge upgraded that will flutter, you know, get that nut taken a look at so that it stays in tune better. And then you probably actually have a pretty good backup guitar, or if this is your very first seven string, this is a great kind of beginner first step to get used to the extended range thing. In the end, especially if you're a Jason Richardson fan, you know, remember, he's gonna get a cut of every guitar that is sold. The more of these that get sold, the longer they're gonna keep the model running. So, you know, if you're a big Jason Richardson fan, you know, support him, go buy the guitar. I think that's totally cool. I think the playability and the tone overall really is pretty good. It's right around what you should expect for a $900 guitar. That bridge, I think, is just really letting it down. 